and thank you for tuning in to Simple Science. My name is Karina and I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about um, health and nutrition, what's going on in our food industry and why we as consumers um, need to be educated and knowledgeable when we go out um, making our food selections and also to kind of give us a general understanding of our health and uh, how we can make everyday small changes uh, to really improve the way that we're feeling. Um, Generally, I like to begin talking about plants and the sunshine. Um, we are all here and existing because of the sun uh, and because of all of the different processes that allow um, animals and humans to capture energy from the sun and make it something that our bodies can use. Um, so photosynthesis is that famous uh, process that plants do um, to literally harness energy from the sun and turn it into a form that uh, can be consumed via the plant and then used in whatever body it's consumed by. Um, photosynthesis is um, one of those processes that's going on all of the time and is responsible for giving plants all of the nutrition um, and enzymes and nutrients um, that make them really valuable to us. So plants are our friends because they um, take energy from the sun and actually harness it into a form um, that our bodies are able to use um, because just sitting out in the sun we only end up sunburned. We won't actually glean any energy from that. Um, so plants do this incredible process called photosynthesis where they um, take that energy from the sun that comes in little neat packages called photons um, and begins to turn it into proteins um, and other components that our bodies can use. Um, understanding that concept and understanding um, really how intricate the process of photosynthesis is kind of helps us understand why whole natural foods are so important. Um, so we've got plants working away 24-7 um, to perform photosynthesis and harness that energy from the sun and the molecules that are created in that process are extremely delicate. Anything that we do to a plant um, between the course of it being picked out of the ground and us eating it um, are all processes that are going to be have to have to be undone by the body in order for our bodies to use it. So um, if you are picking greens straight out of your garden and consuming them, that is the number one best way um, to ensure that you're getting all of the enzymes and nutrients that are in that plant and that were created inside the plant so that you could digest it. Um, once you start taking one part away or processing something, um, heating something to a high temperature, all of these different processes are things that um, once your body ingests that particular molecule, it's going to have to undo. Um, so with uh, whole plants, um, energy is in its most pure form, and the freshest the plant is, the better. Um, the sooner it comes off the shelf, the less distance it has to travel, because uh, every moment after you pick that plant, it starts losing little bits and little bits of its nutrients and enzymes. Um, so when you think about vegetables that maybe get picked in one state and shipped all the way across the country um, to your grocery store or you know local cafeteria, um, that's a really long distance for those plants to have to travel. And not only do they lose um, a lot of their natural nutrients and enzymes, but the powers that be are going to have to add a lot of chemicals to them so just so that they'll survive. Um, so you end up having uh, any number of chemicals um, being added to the plants in addition to them losing that general strength that they had um, when they were created. So during the 1970s, there was a pretty massive movement uh, in the United States um, where people in the food industry began realizing uh, that not only was food an industry that was constantly pervasive and applicable to every single person, uh, but also a very, um, a potentially a very big money maker. Um, Earl Butts was actually quoted as saying that the agriculture industry was the United States' ace in the hole in terms of really creating um, a strong economy, um, having an economy based on something that would be there for a very long time, um, and able to even generate profit for the United States. Um, all of that was a very positive movement, but what it did um, realistically was create a surge um, toward more massive uh, mass producing industrialized um, creation of food. Um, so rather than having 
you know, more and more gardens and more and more food growing, they were able to create food, um, you know, processed food this way, um, and to process foods in certain ways to make them last longer. Um, one of the things that I believe is um, most tragic is um, the history of wheat. Um, now, the grain is composed of three different parts, the bran, the sperm, and the endosperm. Um, and it is all three parts of that grain that make it not only uh, nutritional, but also able to be digested um, by the human body. And so what they actually did um, was find out that they could split that grain into the three different parts and um, use only the endosperm to create the wheat that would go into bread um, because it's starchy and so it gives the bread that, um, you know, the consistency that it needs, the color that it needs. Um, with some other chemicals added in, they were able to, um, to pass it off the same as other bread. Um, and then they were able to use the um, bran and the germ um, to actually create feed for cows and pigs and other livestock. Um, so they were really getting you know, twice the use out of each grain, um, but there are some health hazards that resulted from that um, that I will go into in another video. Um, but that's kind of to give you an example of um, some of these techniques that started coming into play as they were industrializing the food industry and really trying to find ways to make a profit off of food. Okay, so we talked a little about um, how plants harness energy from the sun and why it's so important that we are consuming um, whole, fresh uh, fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. Um, and generally that is because um, plants in their pure forms, picked straight off the ground or off the vine, um, contain all of the enzymes and nutrients that they are needed to contain. Um, so when your body is um, ingesting any particular substance, um, it's going to have to do something with it and break it down um, until it can either be stored, used, or expelled from the body completely. Um, so that's why we have enzymes. Enzymes are catalysts um, for all of these different um, chemical reactions to happen, and certain plants or certain foods are created um, and with uh, their own natural enzymes um, because Mother Nature has known exactly what that plant is going to need in order to be used um, by human beings. So we talked a little bit about um, if you're shipping vegetables or fruits a very long distance um, or doing any kind of processing to them, um, you're not only chipping away at the number of enzymes and stuff that they still are retaining, um, but you're also opening up the possibility that you're probably going to have to add something to it. Um, so when your body is, um, is given something that it's not able to digest, um, there's a lot of different things that happen. Um, one of those things is that um, any toxins um, or any harmful chemicals that are contained within that plant or food um, generally are going to be straight um, expelled from the body. Um, uh, that's the first thing your body wants to do with anything uh, that, it, that it deems is potentially harmful. Um, every plant, every natural food has these toxins that are generally present and um, as I kind of mentioned, the plant is created um, with an inherent mechanism for helping your body get rid of those things. Um, if you're in a situation where those enzymes have been pulled from that plant or food and you are ingesting it, um, your body has an uphill battle um, for digesting it, getting rid of it, using it, or whatever. Um, now, digestion is an energy-consuming process in, it, in itself anyways. So your body is already fighting an uphill battle just to digest the things you eat, and then ideally those things that you eat would contain enough energy that would kind of reimburse back that energy that your body spent to digest it. Um, so in a situation where um, enzymes are depleted, nutrients are depleted, um, your body is starting this uphill climb and it just gets steeper and steeper and steeper. And so not only have you eaten something that's not giving energy to your body, you've eaten something that's taken energy from your body and you will over time create an energy deficit. Um, we will talk a lot about energy later, um, but that idea of the energy deficit is an important one for understanding why these enzymes are so important and why things that are hard to digest are so harmful for us.